Grand Rising family, Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Welcome to your Power Couple Mental Fitness Program with yours truly, King Amar Amari and Queen Amari Amari. In the building, one more time for your Power Couple Mental Fitness Program. And that's right. You know, I got to bring the music in, fam. You know, I can get my DJ on. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Power Couple Mental Fitness Program, sponsored by EY Pele Movement, where we focus on your spiritual, your physical, and your financial well-being. Family, family, hopefully you had a good weekend, family. It's Monday. Listen, the way you start out your day, the way you start out your week is what paves the way. Man, we got a powerful subject matter for you on the day, and it's called Be a Blessing, Not a Burden. That's right. Be a blessing, not a burden. So guess what? You could be a blessing to us by going to Al Cavalon Lifestyle and start shopping with us. We got the new T-shirts in, family. We got the new T-shirts in for you. Check it out. There we go, family. We got the new T-shirts in for you on today. Yes. We focus on economics. Focus on building a financial shelter for you and your family. So go check these t-shirts out. We get ready to go on a short commercial break. And after that, we'll be right back. We're going to dive into the subject. Again, be a blessing, not a burden. Are you there to help or are you there to hurt? What you there to do? your African men's and women's clothing, accessories, health, and wellness product needs. Visit alkibulonlife.com. That's right, family. And so we're going to give thanks to everybody who has been shopping with us. Okay, we want to give gratitude because we understand that without the people of Vision Parish. And as I always like to say, if an author didn't have anyone to read their literature, where would their business be at? Also, if a singer didn't have anyone to listen to their songs or a musician, someone not listening to their music, where would their business be at? So we understand without the people, the vision and the dream pair. So we want to also thank you for shopping with us. We are a proudly African owned and operated business. And when you shop with us, the dollars that you sold into this business, okay, we pour those dollars back into African-owned and operated businesses. And we want you to understand when you shop with us also, that is more than an exchange for goods and currency, okay? You're actually helping us to stay in business. You're helping us to take care of our families, helping us to get those bills paid. You understand what I'm saying? Helping other families, you know, to get theirs paid as well and helping us to be able to have some sustenance. We got to eat. So we greatly appreciate you sowing those dollars into the business. So thank you all for your sharing and inviting for everybody who shared um, and, and you couldn't do anything monetarily. Listen, we greatly appreciate that too. Listen, because somebody else may be able to afford it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for my queen and I. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. Who says that we don't support each other? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So before we dive in, we want to give thanks to our Agungun, which is our ancestors. All right, to our ancestors, our Agungun, to our Agungun, known and unknown before us, we want to give thanks. To them who laid down their life so we can have a better life, we want to give thanks. To them who fought to maintain and to regain our tradition, our spiritual, physical, financial well-being, and our land. To them, we want to give thanks. Because Independence Day, family, is not for us. We want to champion our heroes who truly fought for us to be liberated, like the Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King and the Honorable Malcolm X and Betty Shabazz. Those are our heroes. Those are the ones who truly fought for our liberation. Harriet Tubman, Duty Boakman, Tucson Lovature, and etc. Those Stacey are the Abrams. ones. Stacey Abrams. Oh, 
Yeah, she's still alive. She's not an ancestor, but hey, she still fought for our liberation. So we want to champion those heroes who actually have fought for us to be free. All right. So remember, check your American history 101. Independence Day was not for us. Now, diving in, be a blessing, not a burden. Let's talk about this on today because we want to ensure family that we leave our family inheritance. We, my queen and I, we're big on economic empowerment. Okay. So we want to ensure that we are establishing ourselves economically. If you don't, okay, um, know any financial strategies, we want to thank our brother Kingdom Works all for tuning in, our brother Reginald or one of our mentees doing great things, him and his queen, Tammy. Thank you so much for tuning in. You'll continue yes, love yes. and support. You are the man, as your queen would say, fam, bam. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. So family, listen, you know, um, we want to make sure that, you know, when we transition, okay, that we have a financial plan in place, okay? And one of those is one that all of us know about, but a lot of us don't invest in, you know, and that's an insurance policy, okay? It is imperative okay that we have an insurance policy in place okay as the title states to be a blessing and not a burden we want to leave our family some economical resources to be able to uh bury us okay and also any financial obligations that we have okay um that are left behind you know that they need to pick up when we're gone and hopefully we won't do that you see what i'm saying you know hopefully we'll make sure that everything is taken care of before we leave and that's the importance of ensuring too that you have an insurance on your home as well you know it's something that my queen brought to my attention you know and, and i would like for her to share share that because you know i we was you know doing our own family business plan you know things of that nature and just sitting down and you know and, and talking about the assets you know that that we wanted to ensure that we protect you know things of that nature and so I know you have made a very good point um, as it relates to that. You know what I'm saying? You was like, you know, people want to leave these houses, but, you know, what if they what if they not paid off? You know, so right. talk about that point because you brought that up. I was like, man, she right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, as my king stated, we were having a conversation and we were discussing wills and who we would leave assets to. And uh, we kind of divided them up in our minds where we, uh, would leave our assets. And um, it came to the point where I said, you know, you can leave this stuff to people or to these individuals, but if they don't have the wherewithal to pay it off, you know, what what's going to happen to it? You know, if we don't leave written um, information in our wills as to where uh, our monies from some of these insurances should go, it, it would never be paid off. And as in regards to our, our title, be a blessing and not a burden, we uh, want to be a blessing and don't leave our, uh, what do you call it, our beneficiaries a burden of debt. Because That's after right. you're dead, they're going to look uh, to the estate to, to pay off all.
All right, family. Peace, peace, peace. We are back live and direct on the set. We had uh, some technical difficulties here. Um, so hopefully if, if you're still out there, please, please let us know. You know, um, if you can if you can hear us, that'd be great. Um, you know, we had a power outage. <laughs> we paid our bill. <laughs> hey, we definitely we definitely paid our bill, family. You know, said we we had a power outage that just hit real quick, man. So, you know, we thank everybody who who's hanging in there with us. Um greatly appreciate that. So um as as uh we we were discussing we were discussing in regards to not being you know a burden to our family not leaving our family a a financial burden um financially when, when we transition and we wanted to focus on being being a blessing and, and not a burden to our family because as we know um unfortunately you know a lot of us we're left with um doing that yes that that's true too <laughs> that's that's true too uh grand rising good brother reginald or thank you so much man for those who hanging around thank you so much uh for those who who returned um thank you so much we greatly appreciate it um and and as we know a lot of times we end up doing gofundmes you you understand and so you know um having life insurance is a very good way okay um to be able to leave your family you know uh some wealth um also not leaving them a burden where now they have to try to gather up money you know to be able to bury you you know what i'm saying and you know the truth of the matter is you know that you know you actually pay less for your policy you know what i'm saying um then they actually pay your beneficiary you know what i mean so, you know, it's a very small amount. You could do a term life policy, you know, for those uh, who uh, can't afford, you know, any ones that that is like, you know, um, a UIL, you know, saying IUL, excuse me, the whole life policy. OK, you know, you can invest in in uh, products like that. And believe it or not, you can connect with us, you know, what I'm saying connect with me. I'll be able to point you in the right direction um, in order for you to be able to do that. OK, but nevertheless, you know, you can get one and I promise you. You know, the, the IUL has an investment um, piece to it as well, to where, you know, when you're paying it to it, it has what is called a cash value to it. All right. And a beautiful thing about that is that you could even benefit from that while you're alive. Whereas, you know, like the term life insurance policy, it's only a death benefit to it. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't pay you if you get ill or you can't work and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the beautiful thing about that, too, as well, is that, you know, you're able not to be a burden to your family, too. Why? Because you have some source of income coming in because of the cash value on that policy. OK, now it does take away from, you know, um, the amount, you know, that, that, that the beneficiary will get if should you transition. OK, for if, if you used to get ill or something like that, you couldn't work and things of that nature. OK, you know, what I'm saying it would. However, you know, what I'm saying it would still alleviate that burden, you know, of that. And it still won't affect, you know, the uh, death benefit, you know, of the monies where it can uh, allot your family to be able to give you an appropriate burial. And it doesn't have to come out of their pocket. Please, Queen, continue to talk about what you're talking about. Um, what what I was mentioning is, is that, uh, you know, in order for us not to be a burden to our beneficiaries, uh, should we pass on, we need to set up either a will or something that's directing them to uh, pay off some of this debt. Because just because you went to heaven, that doesn't mean that your children don't have to deal with hell and your beneficiaries don't have to deal with hell when you're gone that I, it doesn't mean that you know magically your bills disappear and magically your house note disappears and then all of a sudden they gift the house to your children it simply means that if you did not put a plan in place uh for after you leave here your beneficiaries would be uh, responsible for your debts your expenses uh medical bills uh secured debt um credit cards, et cetera, and they would come looking for you. 
they will come. I mean, they will come looking for those in charge of the state. They will come and get their car back. They will come and repossess their home. You know, like I said, especially with those secured debt and business debts and all of that. So not only should you uh, get life insurance and, and, and types of insurance that will cover these things as, after you leave or set up some type of uh, monetary uh, account or something that would help with this, you also need to um, make sure that you have some type of will, you know, that that gives instructions on what to do with this. So that was it. <laughs> OK. And then also, family, you know, um, being a blessing and not being a burden is also you being helpful. OK, um, making sure that you contributing to what's going on in the household. All right. Um, she and I, we both have had, you know, some some past experiences where, you know, we felt like we was in there all by ourselves. You know what I mean? And that could be, be very taxing, you know, on a person when they're the ones who's carrying the bulk of the load um, in a relationship. You know what I mean? Um, as it relates to paying bills and things of this nature, you know, um, we should ensure that it's evenly divided, you know, within that household you know, to ensure that everybody's pulling together their resources to make it happen. You know, cooperative economics, uh, I know is, is really looked at in a totally different light because we look at uh, supporting one another business and, 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 and that is a piece of it. However, I don't think that other um, side of the cooperative economics piece is looked at as it relates to uh, internal, you know, in the household, in the family. You know, we look at supporting each other business, exchanging the currency for, for a product or a service. You understand? But what we need to do is start at home. Cooperative economics, it starts at home. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so we need to ensure that, you know, we don't leave a heavy burden on each other as well. You know what I'm saying? That everybody is pulling in, pulling together, you know, and then being able to help. If you have children, and your children are working a job. Okay, now everybody's situation is different. Okay, this is just what I suggest. It worked when I grew up. My grandmother ensured that I paid for the phone bill. You see what I'm saying? So that was my responsibility to make sure that the phone bill was being paid. You know, it teaches your children to do exactly that, to be a blessing and not a burden. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they're eating, you know, they're, they're enjoying the air condition. You know, when it's when it's hot, they're enjoying the heat when it's when it's cold. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they're enjoying all of the the blessings, you know. But where is the labor? They're enjoying the fruit. <laughs> you understand? You know, but but where is the labor at? You know what I'm saying? Who 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 willing to put in the work for the fruit? You understand? So everybody can eat. You know what I mean? You know, I also want to add uh, in regards to the children. There's way that you where ways that you can prepare your children to be a blessing and not be a burden. You know, sometimes I think about, you know, me and my siblings, if possibly if we had gone further in our education and in our career, we can be more of a blessing to our parents, you know, as they became older. But because uh, we didn't, some of us didn't have the the mindset to go as far as we could go, you know, we could only do so much because we had our own families, we had our own children, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and, and like I was saying, one of the ways to be uh, uh, prepare your children to be a blessing is to prepare them uh, with their school and education, encourage them to uh, go after careers and things like that, or, or businesses. Another way uh, with my daughter, I've been, I had my first online business since uh, 2002 was my first online business. And I prepared her so that she wouldn't be a burden. I prepared her to go online to get money. I prepared, I showed her how to uh, do retail, to do e-commerce. Whenever she needs money, she knows where to go. She goes online and she gets her money. So that helps her not to be a burden on me because I taught her how to go get what she needs. And that, that's a wonderful way to do it, because also when you give your children those type of responsibilities, it teach them how to be independent 
you know, I believe that all of us need some help periodically. Even as grown people, we all need help. You know, we all need somebody to help us somewhere along the line. But it's different when that person, you know, what I'm saying is is not mature enough. OK, to be able to function on their own. You understand they're 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 still on the bottle, metaphorically speaking, or um, still with training wheels in their life. You understand what I'm saying? So when you raise your children and you give them responsibilities, right? Uh, we know what the root word is and responsibility is responsible, right? So, you know, when our children are responsible because when our children grow up and they move out of our houses, they're still children. They're just adult children. All of us are children. You know what I'm saying? We never stop being our, our parents' children. You see what I mean? You know, um, so when we do this, what we enable them to do is to learn how to be self-sufficient. And it is imperative. Let me tell you something. Being a retired Marine, OK, and me having an interface with immature, you know, adults is very taxing. It's, it's very taxing because they're in an adult world, but they don't know how to function because they were isolated. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes, family, you know, I, I commend you for not wanting your child or your children not to go through what you went through. However, sometimes fear can cause us to cripple ourselves, okay, and cause a crippling situation in our family. Let me explain. What I mean is, is that we become so afraid to where we don't allow them to have responsibility so when they get into the real world where they're required to be that responsible, they don't know how to function under that type of adult pressure. You understand what I'm saying? Because they haven't been given that. So now someone constantly has to hold their hand. So if they get into a marriage, if they get into any type of relationship, now the person feels like they're more so in a relationship with their child instead of their spouse. Why? Because they weren't given that responsibility, okay, as adolescents. So now that they are adults, they're, they're, they're culture shock as it relates to adult, you know, uh, uh, ways of handling business. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so we have to ensure that, yes, okay, you know, allow them to go to the movies and things of nature, but give them chores. You understand? Teach them how to be responsible, how to take care of what they have. You know, a lot of times we love talking about, you know, what other cultures do by giving their child um, a, a BMW or, you know, things of that nature, giving them a home and, and things of that nature. However, listen, here's the danger. Here's the danger of just following after other people. Here's the question. You don't know how they raise their child. You understand? You don't know how they raise that child. You don't know how that child actually functions in the real life. You don't know the phone calls they probably get. Well, mom, dad, I need this. And mom, dad, I need that. Why? Because they just cater to their children. They just let them do whatever. They just gave them whatever without them earning it. You understand? Without them. OK, first, I give you a Nissan first. Then I give you. You know what I'm saying? The Mercedes later after I see how you take care of the 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 uh, the the Honda Nissan. or the Nissan. You understand? You know, so so that's the problem that we have. We constantly look at other people and we praise them so much about what they're doing. But why would you leave your child a business when they're not taking care of their own business? Hmm. Here we go. See, this is the reason why I say you got to stop following everybody else. This is why I say you handle your business the way you're supposed to. You understand? See, what I like about Run um, from Run DMC is that if you look at Diggy, you know why Diggy is the way that Diggy is? His son is because Run made him work for it. You know his uncle Russell Simmons? When he went to his uncle Russell Simmons, you know, he kicked him out of the office and told him, you need to go get a business plan before we do business. Yes. 
and run daughters. Kick them all out. <laughs> Told them you need to come up with a solid business plan. He said, I'm not going to get this to you just because I'm your uncle. You understand? He said, no, no, you need to come up with a business plan. You understand? And, and that's that's what I admire. The same thing with LL Cool J, the same thing. You understand? Teaching their children and believe it or not, um, um, Damon Dash, he does the same exact thing with his children. Master P with his son. You understand? See, those are the type of people that you want to pay attention because look at their children now. They're bosses. They're bosses. You understand? They're bosses now. They have their own businesses now. They're making their own money now. Why? Because their parents taught them how to be bosses. You understand? So guess what? In order for us not to burden ourselves, we got to ensure that our children are positioned to win. And this is the reason why my queen and I put our child and our children, okay, rather on, on the team. You understand? So, so we can raise them to function because you know why? We talked about this. Wait a minute. How are we going to leave them a business and they not handle their own business. And they don't know how to run the business. Thank you. How are you going to leave them rental houses or to be property managers and you never taught them or showed them how a rental house is run or how to be an investor or how to be someone that, take care of, uh, that takes care of this. This is why we had to have our children go side by side in, some, in the businesses that we have so that if something should happen to us, they have the wherewithal in order to go forward in taking care of this business. If not, they going to what? Liquidate everything. Not saying that they should not, should or should not liquidate. You know, that would be their choice. But at least if you're going to leave something such as a business to them, at least let uh, teach them how to run that business. Teach them the ins and outs of that business. That's right. I want to thank our good brother, Evan Jefferson for tuning in, who is teaching children how to do that. The parents hand the children over to him. He has a financial course, okay, where he's dealing with the youth, okay, also dealing with a financial institute, okay, to be able to teach them that. You understand? You know, so you want, you want to go join the Black Billionaires Club. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put that information up there. Literally, you know, um, you, you can go on there, okay? And you can come and, and, and be a part of that because it's a lot of financial information that's being shared in there. And the young people are explaining, you know, you understand, you know, they're, they're learning trading, they're learning crypto, you know, you understand they're learning options, right? You know, this is the age of information. We are without excuse. We are without excuse. If you don't know, you learn, you understand? You know, that's one thing about African people. You know, our problem is we, we keep talking about what happened to us. And I'm not trying to make light of what happened to us. You understand? But it's your choice to continue to be a victim. And you know what happens? We raise our children to be the same way. We raise our children to be the same way. You understand? And, and the only way that we can stop this generational curse of, of ignorance, of financial illiteracy, of financial brokenness, okay, is by us taking authorities of our own personal lives and stop using well, I'm African. That don't make sense. How do you have people like Madam C.J. Walker making all that money, became a millionaire, and she didn't even have the resources that we have? Huh? How do you explain John F. Smith? Okay? And a lot of these people, matter of fact, Michael Jordan, he wasn't born into no wealthy family. Neither was Oprah Winfrey. Her grandmother told her that she would be hanging up clothes for the rest of her life. And she refused to believe that. Tyler Perry was homeless. And Cicely Tyson's uh, mother threw her out of the house when she told her that she wanted to be an actress. She threw her out the threw house. Threw her out the house. You understand? See, family, we're talking about mindset here. We're talking about drive here. Understand, you are a burden to yourself. We got to understand that. We are our own problem because the way we think, you understand what I'm saying? We're too focused on looking like money instead of having it and knowing how to grow it, sustain it, and protect it. You understand? 
we become our own burden. It's the African mindset that's our own burden because we keep playing the victim. Well, I'm African. I'm a man. I'm a female. Oh, I, I live in the projects. Well, we grew up in the hood too. And, and now we're, we're serial entrepreneurs. We control multiple businesses. One of the most lucrative businesses in the world, real estate. Multiple online businesses. My father told me he didn't want to see me no more at the age of five. I was tossed back and forth between my grandmother and my mother. Lost my best friend when I was 15 years old. My other best friend, I was 17. I grew up on welfare. I went to the street, to, to, the, to the corner store, you know what I'm saying, getting credit. Now I'm a retired Marine. I served for 20 years. Got a, a retirement pension for the rest of my life. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you know, my queen and I, we're building the uh, infrastructure for our family economically. You understand? And she studied. This woman, I'm telling you, she inspired me. You know what I'm saying? She is a researcher. If she want to know something, she go learn. I'm telling you straight up. You understand? And she inspired me because I seen she was so educated because she studies. And I say, you know what? If I want my situation to change, then I got to start studying. Let me see what you're saying out here, family. Because I've been talking quite a bit. And, and that's key, too. You know, people don't want to read. They go by what everybody else says and they don't research these things themselves. And, and then we have, uh, you know, misinformation out there because you heard one broadcaster make up something and say, now, now all of a sudden you believe it. That's right. And, you know, we go too much off of what somebody else says. You understand? You know, and so we're going to talk about that on this Wednesday. OK, it's um, who's in your circle. The circle is it a circle of life or a circle of death. You want you want to tune in again on this Wednesday. So we're going to talk about it because we 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 really feel like you're getting a picture. OK, you know, what I'm saying it's all about mindset. OK, you live the way you think, you know, what I'm saying what what whatever you set your mind to do is what's going to happen. You understand? So a man think in his heart, so is he. If you think that about yourself, then that's what you are. You understand? If you think you can't, then you're right. If you think you can, you're right. You understand? It's all about a mindset, family. You know, and listen, as we always say, work on building that financial shelter, okay? You start one investment at a time. Listen, family, let me tell you something. I listen to the financial educator, Evan Jefferson, okay? I listen to him. And, and this is real talk. This is no lie. OK. And this is the gentleman here that I'm referring to. I started becoming more serious about investing, listening to him. And I invested and I promise you that I literally invested a certain amount of money and it tripled by investing. OK, for real, like you just got to take a step. Listen, it was on. It's only been a couple of years ago that I started family, like being a serious investor. OK, after I read a book, I know some of you may not like them, you know, what I'm saying, but it's OK. I'm all about the information, but I want to show it to you because my queen gave this to me. That's why I love this woman so much, man. That's why I love this woman so much. You know, what I'm saying she gave me this book and this is the first time I ever heard sophisticated investor. OK. And then Evan, he had brought a gentleman on, okay, who is an option trader. He's a trader too. He's into trading and stocks and, and things of nature. And I read this book and let me tell you something. It took my consciousness to a totally different level. Yeah. I listened to the financial educator, Evan Jefferson, and the money tripled in a year. Now, let me tell you, I was like, whoa, <laughs> I'm serious, family. This thing is it's not just no talk. Like if you know what to invest in if you know the right investments okay this is why you know you seek out education because i sought out the education and let me tell you something the law of attraction is real because that's what my queen and i think about how can we um set our family up to be able to to be financially secure you know what uh uh 
uh, programs can we get involved in that can help set us up to position ourselves to win? What can we read? Who we need to listen to? And man, when I listen to that brother right there and I read this book, you understand? I seen the money triple when I invested in stocks. I promise you I did. I promise you I did. You understand? And I had just started. You know what I'm saying? It went up triple. I'm like, whoa, I need to share this with the family. And that's why I come on here. It's not like, listen, I, I want everybody to understand. Listen, man, I just started with all this stuff. I just started with real estate. I just started being an entrepreneur a few years ago. Okay. But let me tell you something. You know what gave me an edge? It's education. Education gave me an edge. Education helped to eradicate poverty in my life. Education helped me to execute accurately and set our businesses up right. You understand? So we started out stepping out on the right foot because of education, legally registering our business. You know, it set us up to get to the money. You understand? We got the paper to get to the paper. You understand? You know, so I just wanted to share that with you, family. And this is the reason why we started this program, because we've seen so many of us, OK, we burden ourselves because we don't do what we're talking about. You understand? We have to learn these things. You understand? And the only way you can know is to learn, because teaching means to impart knowledge. Knowledge means to make you aware of something. And not only that, you got to execute what you what you have been educated about. It's not enough to know. Yeah. It's not enough to understand. You understand? It's not enough to know to understand. It's not enough. What are you doing? What are you doing with what you know? You understand? And when you do something with what you know, then you will see your life grow. You understand? You will see uh, your 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 territory enlarge, and I'm talking about your intellectual property. Then you can start acquiring assets. And you start seeing your life start appreciating. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm talking about economically as well. It's imperative that we start listening and get this education. Queen, last words. We're getting ready to close here, fam. No, nope, no last words. Okay, Take family. Take care of the family. Make sure you are a blessing and not a burden. Yes, indeed. So remember, here's our information. You know, if you want to uh, contact us, uh, reach out to us here. That's our YouTube channel. Make sure you go check us out. Subscribe. We'll subscribe back. We don't care how many followers you have. OK, we're not focused on that. What are you providing that's good content? That's what I'm looking at. I don't care if we got more followers than you. I'm more concerned about what is it that you're saying and doing? Is it adding value to somebody's life? If that be the case, we will follow. And not only that, we will reshare because Citadel Network Group LLC, we are the community liaison for entrepreneurs and consumers. If you have a product or service that you would like to highlight and get more exposure, we will have no problem with resharing it if your page is up to par. Okay. All right. So we got to make sure your page is good now. You know, it don't need to look like it's hacked. Okay. You understand? Clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Clean it up so it can blow up. Come on, gets to that money, family. Gets to that money. All right. So that's what we want to help you do too, is to get to that money too as well. And to bless your family and the lead generational wealth. Um, so Synergetic Network Group LLC, we are the community lays out for entrepreneurs and consumers. Uh check us out um on on our, our, our Instagram page and on our our Facebook page. Okay, just go there, you know what I'm saying? Connect with us there. Again, uh, we would love to reshare your information, okay? Um, also, remember, don't forget to go check out at Kevin Lyle Lifestyle, where we provide African men and women's clothing, women and accessories, okay? You can find us here as well, okay? We have urban fashion as well, too, for you as well. So, you know, you want to put on some t-shirt and jeans, we got you. Springtime is coming. Remember, we got the t-shirts for you. You know, it's here, all right? So, go check us out, all right, family? So, we love you all. You all have a blessed rest of your day and week, and we'll see you on Wednesday, okay, and Friday, 10 o'clock a.m., you know, Central Standard Time, Facebook Live, live and direct from the set, but yes. yours truly, King Amar Mari and Queen Amani Amari in the building. Yeah.